This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Yes, it is the Ramble. It goes from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, a little bit later, we're going to be talking to our um, citizens panel, which is a different kind of way of doing a talk show. It's not just one person calling to talk and interact with the host, but a whole bunch of people. And one of them could be you, and we'll tell you how in just a little bit. But right now, it's time to talk to an old friend. Yes, and you know who it is. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, that person who's known as Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Good, good. Just worked with our old friend Dave Attell, which always is the <laughs> funniest man in the world. I love Dave. He's, I know, he's the best. He, uh, he's a strange human being. <laughs> and that's saying something in a world full of strange human beings and comedy, you know? Yes, and uh, I remember you used to have him. Uh, he used to come out. They used to bring him out to San Francisco, and he didn't. I don't think people under caught on to him right away out here. But you kept having him on the radio, and, and uh, I, I also used him in my. Uh, I think he was did one of my New Year's shows too. Oh yeah, ninety yeah, seven. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I know I always thought Attell was incredible. I was yeah. always uh, always in his corner, so to speak. So you know, how's he doing? Good. He's working a lot. Uh, still living in New York. New York is so. I didn't know it was as expensive as San Francisco, but he was just telling me that prices of uh, trying to buy a place there is insane. Trying to buy a place? Yeah, I think he's got a place now, but he's, I thought he was looking for another place. And they just tell me like, like a small two bedroom is like three million dollars or some what? insane amount. What? Yeah. Is that? Could that be right? Listen, anything's possible now. I mean, in the building I'm in, okay, they take an apartment which is rent stabilized or or even rent controlled, you know, uh, but rent stabilized. It's something like oh, I don't know, fifteen hundred dollars a month, and luckily you get something like three bedrooms for that, you know. Because it's an old, old place, you know, and a lot of people have been here for a long time. But when somebody moves out or when something becomes available, they go in and they gut the apartment. They do it like the apartment I'm in, if I could show it to you, uh, is a, a lot of wood in this apartment. A lot of wood. They go in, they rip out all the wood paneling, right, which goes back to 1900. All right, and put in they got all the good stuff. Put in lath and plaster, and you know, uh, hollow core doors and all of that, so that it looks, I guess, clean for the uh, uh, I don't know the people today who just don't relish a good, beautiful, old fashioned apartment, and uh, they then turn around. And charge seven thousand dollars a month for it. Jesus, you know. I mean, it's it, it's amazing. Uh, and our place, uh, I think this place probably, if we were paying rent on it, should be at, at rent stabilized. It should be like about fifteen hundred bucks. And um, what the landlords do is they usually, if they go in and they fix it up, they like do a lot of work on it or do some work on it. They can then jack the price up way above what is uh, rent stabilized price, and once they do that, it's no longer a rent stabilized apartment. Yeah. It's a really strange game they play here, but all of that tends to drive everything up, you know. Now, I mean, you know, Attell's screaming about the fact he can't buy an apartment for under three million. Uh, you know, he's not renting like the rest of us. He's a he's no. a special person. As it were, so what happened? Can't, how can there be so many <laughs> rich people? I just well, you know, I don't I, know if I, I can make it. It's, I realize yeah. that if tomorrow we were to like leave Manhattan, there would be no way we could buy back into it. 
Right. Same here. You know, especially at my age with my fixed income and shit like that, uh, we can never afford to just find an apartment in New York City. That's why we're fighting for this one, and we're hoping everything comes out okay on it because uh, um, we're here, you know, and we're entrenched. Now, I talked to a girlfriend about, hey, we maybe we should move to California. We should go somewhere else. I don't know anybody out there. Well, you know, I don't know anybody here. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know any. I can't say outside of my friend Shecky, I really know anybody here in New York City, you know. But she does, you know, and all her, all her friends are here and so on. So that's the reason I stay, that and the fact that she has a good job. Yeah, she's not going to leave. Well, she, you know, she's not going to, you know. She's, if you want to go to California, you go to California, you know. And I said, well, you know, we could get a place fairly inexpensively in upstate California, you know, what, live out in the woods? I said, yeah, sure, why not, you know? It's as Mm -hmm. nice as anything else, you know? So, I don't know. uh, But it's it's rough. I mean, the rents are just horrible. And it isn't going to get any better under Trump. No, I just, uh, I just, I run into so many people that are worried about being able to survive. Everything's expensive. It's well, people, not the world we grew up in. Yeah, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about surviving. I mean, I'm, I'm stupid. I never saved enough money. Okay. Me either, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't have a good retirement plan either. We, uh, you know, I mean, I have money. I'm living on it, and I can continue to live on it, and. Uh, I have a Vanguard account that's been doing very nicely and, and things like that. And I guess I can keep going. But, you know, the, the problem is in, in, in figuring out this sort of thing is you don't know how long you're going to live. That's you, the you, hard you, part, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you, could, you could drop dead tomorrow and then you're ahead of the game because you still got money. But, no, you're not ahead of the game because you didn't spend it all. Yeah, you didn't have fun with it. You didn't have fun with it because you were saying, "How long am I going to live?" So <laughs> this, you know, there should if if you knew what day you were going to die, I think that might be a valuable piece of information. Yeah, but who would want to know? Yeah, but who'd want to know? But you know, it's killing me here. Going well, I'm saving money. I'm not spending money a lot because I have to make it last, and I don't know if it's going to last. And da 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 da, da. and uh, you know that's all. But if I drop dead tomorrow, then I I lost the game, you know. So it's really mm-hmm. strange, you know. So live as though every day is your last, and spend all your money. <laughs> what the hell? It was the old comic Tommy Sledge. Live every day like you like it's your last. A it, lot of crying and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like it's your first. <laughs> A lot of crying and screaming. You know, we go in crying and screaming, and we leave crying and screaming. We leave the same way. <laughs> it's a horrible planet, really, when you think about it. You know, just before I got, came here, I was watching uh, Showtime, and they have a new show on called I'm Dying Up Here. Have you heard about this? I've. Is that about the the book, based on the book? I don't know if there is there a book called "I'm Dying Up Here." What, what's it about? It's about comedy. It's about the no, okay, it comedy. About the book, comedy yeah. in the seventies. Yeah, and the comedy store, right? Yeah, I did read the book. It was great. Yeah, and uh, uh, I uh, all I could think of was number one. It was seventy three that this thing takes place on as to me that whole comedy boom was a little later than that you know did the comedy store start doing really well i mean this isn't the comedy store they call it something else because the comedy store is down the street in this show yeah uh, well i think the comedy they did start in the like mid 70s that's when letterman and leno oh and okay Richard lewis and all those people were running around and then the boom we were in started well i started in 81 and i think the boom up here started like the mid 80s well, the boom actually was, I'm going to have to say, like, I got there. I was doing radio in 80 there, mm-hmm. uh, and 81, 82, 83. By the time we yeah. got to 83, it was getting pretty hot. Yeah, you kicked it off here, and then uh, then Goldway came out here in 83, and the place went insane. You had him on the show, and then you started doing those big shows with him. Yeah. 
and uh, you know, it was uh, it was a we good had a good run for a few years. Yeah, we had a good run. Yeah, it used to be a big shot. But I would love to have seen that uh, that scene they had in the seventies with uh, Leno and those guys. The comedy store it sounded like it was really fun. Letter they said Letterman was really good at uh, working the crowd. Yeah, and and uh, you know it's interesting that Leno and Letterman became such uh, adversaries in a way. Right, they were really good friends in those days. And they were both apparently well, writers for uh, Good Times. Uh, uh, for Good Times, did they mm -hmm. write for Good Times? I don't remember that. Let's think. I'll yeah. look this up, but I'm pretty sure Letter, Letterman and Leno both were staff writers for the Jimmy Walker show. Yeah. Letterman was on, oh, somebody's trying to call me and so my watch goes off. And then listen to that. I should take <laughs> all these things into another room. Who's trying to call me? It sounds like oh, a Spike oh, Jones it, album. It's my girlfriend. Hold on a second. Let me answer my watch here. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? She can't hear me. Uh, call failed. Okay. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with her. You know. Oh, here she's calling back again. Now wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm doing an interview with Larry Bubbles oh. Brown. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and that was talking to my watch you know. oh boy this my life is like that you know every time nobody ever calls me nobody ever calls me until well, i'm doing, doing an interview me too yeah and then and then i forget i should take all this stuff and leave it in the bedroom the watch everything so that it doesn't uh, come off you know go off and do what it does but anyway so, no, those days down there were, you know, those two guys were pals. They were, you know, they were buds. And then yeah. when Letterman got a show, who do you have on all the time? Leno. Leno. Who? Which when Leno was, he was a, he might have been the funniest comic around at that time. I just yeah. remember he was hilarious. He was very edgy and he'd come on and uh, just kill. And then when he got to the night show, he kind of... Uh, I guess he didn't want to offend anybody, so he got very mainstream. Yeah, but but the thing is that um, Letterman made him, and then you know he turns around, goes out, and does his own show opposite Letterman. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I wonder if Letterman ever still kicks himself in the ass for having helped Leno. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, these things come back to haunt you. But no, so I'm just watching the beginning of it. I've just got about ten, fifteen minutes into it, and it looks okay, you know. Well, looks, I gotta, I gotta see that. I don't watch much uh, TV, but that sounds interesting. It looks authentic enough. Let me put it that way. Okay. Uh, uh, anybody, anybody, uh, any big names in it, or just? Uh, no, no, they're all actors playing comedians, which I it sometimes bothers me. Uh, the only person I saw who was doing stand-up in it, who actually we know is Dom Herrera. Oh, okay. Who may be, in many ways, the funniest man I've ever <laughs> seen on a stage. I mean, was well, he? May, he may have been in that '70s scene. <laughs> He's been um, around a long time. Yeah, but I don't know if he was in the '70s scene. I think I think he st he was in that '80s group, you know. Uh, but man, Herrera, God, I've had Herrera have to stop doing jokes so I could survive <laughs> because I was laughing so hard that it was hurting and it was killing me. And, uh. <laughs> you know, uh, he, he, one of the best comedians, I think you'll agree, that I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 Again, another one of those people that you go, Dom Herrera, and people say, who? You know, mm -hmm. and you go, yeah, Dom Herrera. He was wonderful, you know, and... You know, I, I say Larry Bubbles Brown, they go, who? I say Stephen Pearl, they go, who? I, You know, I name a lot of people who were terrific. I mean, um, how funny was Jeremy Kramer? Oh, the best. You know, and yet all uh, all these really good people have not had what I consider the career they should have had. I'm not saying no. you're a failure, yeah. but you're not 
the success you should have been. Yeah, well, I think it's a business in many ways. It's kind of a lottery. So. Is it a lottery or is it something that you don't do that you should be doing? You know? I mean, taking 20 years between Letterman shows, <laughs> which is... I guess a, I could have pushed a little harder. But. Yeah, which is a, is a record, you have to admit. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a record, and... Uh, you never, you know, it took you twenty years to go back there and do it again. I know. When you should have been back there doing it again three months later, but you never had that kind of drive. I don't have any drive. I didn't have an agent. So. Yeah. Did you ever have an agent? Did you ever get an agent? No, never did. I just had. I had one locally here, which I still do in town for what few work comes through town, but. That was it. Never had anybody in L.A. Who's who's the agent? I never heard of an uh, agent. Look, Sarah. talent, uh, Joan Spangler. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I know the name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, she she basically books comics, or she books other people too. She books uh, mostly act. No, just the acting work. So. Oh okay. I've gotten a little, uh, three lines in the Kite Runner in twenty years. That's my <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Spangler is really doing well for you. <laughs> well, not, it's not her fault. It's not. One thing is, they used to shoot a lot of stuff in San Francisco. They don't. They don't anymore. Yeah. Now, all all the stuff that comes through San Francisco is non-union. So if you're in Sag or which I am, you can't do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. But Dom Moran, we're talking back to Dom. Dom's got a great little part in the Big Lebowski. In in the in the old movie, the Big Lebowski, right? Yeah. Yeah. He plays the uh, the limo driver. Oh yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Um, but there's another guy. I mean, Dom, you know, just should have been the biggest thing going. And there was just something that, and he was there. He pushed himself. You know, he was there. Mm -hmm. He was there a lot. And I've just never been able to, um, to, I guess it has to do with pushing yourself, you know, and being aggressive. Yeah, and, I think that outweighs talent, really. And, so. and what I've often found and I've often said is the worst thing that can possibly happen to you, the biggest curse, is when they say, oh, you know something? He's comedy legend. He's, he's great. He's the best. He's, the, he's a comedy genius. And, <laughs> and that becomes disabling. Oh, yeah. Because you figure, well, if I'm a comedy genius and I don't have to do anything, it's going to come to me. Mm -hmm. And it never does. No. You know, and that's the problem, and that's the shame of it all. And that's why things should be better than they are, you know. So when you look at a guy like, uh, let's say, Jeremy Kramer, very funny guy. I mean, hell, how much material did Robin use of of Kramer's? <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and he would hang around Kramer like Kramer was his comedy gold. And nope. yet... Kramer didn't have the push. He didn't have the drive. You know, occasionally he'd pop up somewhere. Yeah, I saw him once on uh, uh, um, the, the little Larry David show, you know. Uh, but you don't see him that often. And I don't even know what happened. Do you, do you talk to Jeremy Kramer? I occasionally see him on Facebook. I really don't know what he's doing. Uh, he was in a... He was in one of Rob Schneider's movies where he played a uh, manager of a yogurt stand. <laughs> I think he could have been a great character. I agree. It's hilarious in that. I mean, he's, uh, I, I think uh, we all agree Kramer was just drop-dead funny off the top of his head. Oh, you know? yeah, just insanely funny. Uh, and just every time I'd see him, I was a new half hour. And Steve Pearl, who I have on here occasionally, is rapid fire, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's nobody quite like that around today. Who else was rapid fire? Um, well, I'm, well I, I would say Pearl probably had this, the, as close to the high energy as Robin did. I don't think he was in that yeah. incredible the energy, only difference right? The only difference between Pearl and, uh, and Robin was that Pearl could make stuff up on the spot. Robin, everybody thought Robin was just, you know, making it all up on the spot. There wasn't a single thing Robin did that he hadn't tried out first. You know, he just made it seem like it was ad lib. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree with that? 
Yeah, yeah, but Robin had that. I think he had an incredible likability factor. Oh, yes. There's no question about it. Uh, and he had a huge factor, and this is something that I talk about often to comedians, a thing called authority. In other words, he looks at you and he says, this is funny. You know, I'm being a comic. Laugh at mm -hmm. me. And and a lot of times I would say to people, I'd say, oh, Robin Williams, funniest man ever in the whole universe and everything. I say, okay, tell me something funny he said. And they can't repeat anything. Because right. it, everything Robin did was making you say, you better laugh now because this is funny. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I Bob, he, Bob Hope used to do that. Bob Hope would plant his feet on the stage, tell a joke. It could be the shittiest joke in the world. And then he would look at the audience with authority and they would laugh because that joke was supposed to be funny. You know, so. Yeah, authority, authority is very, I think Leno kind of had that very kind of that authoritarian voice and yeah, you, but you, you, you have to believe in what you're saying, okay? Right. And it has to so be, you know. Hope, I think, yeah, supreme confidence. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I was watching this show, and I'm thinking about, uh, I'm going to be talking to you in a couple of minutes, so I may, may as well mention uh, this. God, I, got, I want to see that. The only yeah. other thing I've been watching is uh, the, the TV series Fargo. Yeah. Which I, did, I didn't think I'd like that, and I do. Oh, Fargo's wonderful. Did you see the first two seasons? I've seen the first two. The second season I didn't like as much. The third third season I like a lot. It, this, I, you, you actually feel cold watching that show. <laughs> it looks so freezing there. Oh, it's always freezing. It's always snow. There's always snow. They shoot it in Canada because it's the only place they can yeah. find enough snow <laughs> to do this damn thing. And in, in a way, you got to feel sorry for the actors who have to s travel up there. And mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, deal with all this snow and the ice and uh, all of that, uh, but this is a, it's a very good show. It's a very good. Yeah, show. Yeah, I, I realized what I uh, got. Billy Bob Thornton is a really good actor. Yeah, and uh, what was I watching the other day though? That was so goddamn. Oh, there is this show. Uh, it's it's been canceled finally after three seasons called American Crime, and it was done by John Ridley, who did twelve years wrote Twelve Years a Slave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every show he does, he has several other shows on the air, are the most depressing goddamn shows ever. <laughs> I mean, right up my alley. <laughs> they are just downright depressing. And I watch these things, and they're good. I mean, they're really good, but they're depressing. I mean, it's just people, it's just about people's lives being ruined by a crime that happened. And, and, and you, it, it, there's always one teenage girl overdosing in every one of his years. Every year is a different story with the same actors. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> in other words, each year the actors play a different role. And there were three seasons of it. And I'm thinking to myself, how did it make it past one? <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine a, a, you know, an average American audience watching this thing because there's no hope. <laughs> It's just depressing. But I'm telling people, it's on uh, two of the seasons are on Netflix right now. Watch American Crime. It's a great show. Really? But, oh, okay, I'll check it out. But get ready to be depressed. But then again, you really like stuff that depresses you. I do, and I love crime. I love true crime things, too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, I love... Uh, Fargo, because it just gets so bizarre, you know. It's bizarre. It's incredibly violent, too, but <laughs> as the Coen brothers tend to be. But Yeah. And then I saw, oh, God, this the most horrible show of the year, and it's it's so bad. Well, I'll, maybe I'll talk about it next week when we're talking, but okay. um, Twin Peaks. <laughs> The, oh, I never saw the first go around. No, the new Twin Peaks is the biggest clusterfuck I've seen on television. But I'll 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 talk about that next okay. week. Give us something to talk about. Otherwise, your life's been going good. Been going good. I'm still I, I'm still working, which I didn't think I would be at this advanced years, but who knows. You thought you'd be an agent by now? Is that what you thought? I thought yeah, I thought I'd get into something that would make me money, but uh, 
Speaking of which, you know who died recently was uh, Brad Gray. Yeah. Was not, yeah. That, not that old. No, quite young, actually. He died, what? 50, 59. 59. And a, a very big agent in, in L.A. Yeah. He was the agent you wanted, you know. Yeah, he, no, the, he handled the, Dana Carvey. And, yeah. uh, but then he went well, to, he went to uh, Paramount to be the head of Paramount and was there for 13 years until they finally fired him. And then he mm -hmm. died just a few months later. Hey, look, we've run out of time. Always good to end on a death note. <laughs> Always good to end on a death note. You want to do it again next week? Of course sure, you will. you got it. Yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. That's Larry Bubbles Brown, and I'm Alex Bennett, and it's time now for us to uh, deal with our, uh, our uh, uh, citizens panel. And uh, you can see me here. I'm in my studio. Yeah, studio. It's a room in my apartment. What can I say? I used to do these things out of studios, and I don't do them out of studios anymore. But who cares? Anyway, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the lines here. The lines are Skype lines, actually. Uh, but, you know, you can um, um, uh, call us. You're welcome to call us, as a matter of fact. Uh, and um, uh, you, you call us at uh, uh, using Skype. And our uh, Skype address is GabNet Live. Now, if you want to use the phone... You can use the phone. It's just not as much fun because you don't get to see the other people who are part of the citizens panel. Uh, but you go to uh, 347 352 If you want any of that information, it's available to you at gabnet.net. And uh, we're saying hello, first of all. Boy, he's the first one tonight, Brian Ludwig. Hello, Brian. Hello. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Are you uh, you on a phone or are you... Uh, I am mobile right now. You are mobile. So all we have really here of you is a, uh, is a uh, still, actually, uh, of you. So uh, we, can't, uh, we can't see you. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing all right. How was your weekend? It was okay. Uh, altered a little work schedule-wise, but other than that, as far as the hours are concerned, I still work the same hours. I just work Mondays now. Well, you do what? You're... I work Mondays now, so... Yeah, but what do you do again? We... we uh... Uh, courier. I Cur deliver uh, shit. Yeah. Is, is that a boring job, or is that kind of a nice enough job because it's outdoors and stuff? Uh, more the latter. It can be the former. It can be boring if you let it. If you let if it. If you're like me. If yeah. you let it, A, if you're... Uh, if you're a, if you're more socially oriented, which I am not, admittedly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you might have a hard time with all the alone time you face, and if you hate driving, yeah. that's another uh, negative detrimental nail in your coffin as for why you wouldn't want to do what I do. Right. But uh, um, if, on the other hand, you you uh, can entertain yourself either by listening to music, audio books. Uh, learning a thing or two via audiobooks or uh, audio lectures or uh, watching uh, videos uh, then well by all means it's one of the it's one of the greatest jobs out there as far as I'm concerned yeah I, what what's the weirdest thing you ever had to deliver do you know honestly it's a regular it's regular for me it's and it's not uncommon for me to have to deliver uh, 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 human remains. What? Organs as well. Oh, you, uh, skin, uh, uh, organs, tissue. Is that because uh, just of, today I had to deliver, I had to uh, I had to acquire a heart from a uh, from a place called the uh, uh, Center for Organ Recovery or wow. CORE for short uh, to take to the airport. I of course had to take it to the office because it was too late for me well, to take it to the well, airport. Let, let me, but it will be yeah. taken to the airport to be taken overseas tomorrow morning by some other courier. Wow. So you 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 really have a great responsibility there. It's not just like any other courier job. It's not like, you know, you're delivering stuff from Amazon. That is correct. Well, I 
I, I could see myself doing that too if I ever get a vehicle of my own to be an independent contractor. Yeah, well, I mean, so, is the company you work for, do they deal in organs and things like that in this kind of delivery system? That, yes. Uh, they also, uh, uh, I've also picked up, um, like, as I've said before, medication yeah. to uh, take to the airport. And more, more recently, we've acquired a new, this is why I'm working Mondays now, mm-hmm. we've acquired a new account which uh, does basically the same thing as uh, CVS, CVS Pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, wow, wait a minute. Wow. We've got a problem got, here. Yeah. Oh, really? Phil, you, Phil got, you better call you, us back. Well, I don't know what, what happened, happened here. Okay, it was a fresh connection, too. Uh, what, right. It was a fresh, was connection. A fresh connection. Who knows? Yes. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway. All right, cool. Anyway, are you, are you still there, Brian? Are you there, Brian? Brian. Are you still there, Brian? Well, here comes Phil. I yeah. a- add him. Are you there, Phil? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, and what about Brian? Yeah. Are you there, Brian? Brian, are you there? Phil, you're there, right? Yeah, I'm here. And Brian, are you there? Uh, he looks uh, like he. Yeah, uh, no, he, he's not he got. Anymore. Yeah, here we go. Add to group call. Let's see here. Are you there, Brian? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. It's always, yeah, it's what we call the uh, the initial curse of, uh, of first caller of the, yeah. of, of the first caller yeah that it causes some kind of problem where like you just called in like you're supposed to call I mean nobody's a more experienced caller than Phil yeah and yet I have the same problem everybody else has you have the same problem everybody else has so yeah yeah uh, it's Skype what do you expect yeah. Do you hear? Do you hear what I was talking to, to Brian about? It's fascinating. Yeah, about the uh, hearts and uh, transplants and uh, delivering skin, and uh, it's pretty cool. Give me some skin, man. Yeah, hey, you know, when, do you get to? Do you have do, a heart? What? Yeah, no heart. It, but do you get to do the international travel too to drop the thing off, or it's uh, another guy's territory? Are you there, Brian. Back on mine. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 He, he yeah, that's not the international aspect. What uh, Phil was asking, and direct answer to his question. No, it's not my. Uh, it's not my area. Ah, all right. Okay, so it's not your area. In other words, you just you get it to the airport, right? Yeah, and they take it from there. Yeah. Are there people at the airports who specialize in making sure this stuff gets to where it's going? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to, otherwise, they don't have a job. Or do nor do I. Yeah, but once you hand it over, you're not responsible for it anymore. That is correct. But if somewhere you lose the heart on the highway somewhere, then it's your fault. You know, I, I can imagine uh, getting hijacked for that kind of stuff because uh, you know somebody needs a liver or a heart, and uh, you know, uh, you know the guy uh, says, "Okay." Oh, well, th- uh, thanks Brian for bringing that up. Now somebody's going to get the idea, find out where <laughs> Brian lives, and follow him around till they get a heart. <laughs> it's pretty discreet. Yeah. And besides, it's not like I'm willing to die for this shit. You know, you want the uh, you want the heart and the liver. Hell, I'll take. I'll give you the keys and the car to take with it. <laughs> well, on the side of the box, what it ought to say is not a heart or medical. It should say uh, nuclear waste. <laughs> and, and but nobody per, but pronounced nuclear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nuclear. Yeah. There, that's very good, Phil. See, it's not that hard to say. Yeah, it's it, nuclear, but you know, no, like nuclear. That. Yeah, nuclear. N- nuclear. Who cares? People get the point. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, they they know it's explosive and yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, talking about explosive, uh, I, I think uh, Ariana, uh, whatever her name is. Grande. Uh, the, yeah. 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 Uh, how did the guy get in with a bomb? Well, the, the, he got into an area that isn't the stadium proper. Now, it's not that the, the auditorium, rather. It's not that yeah. the auditorium does a great deal of watching out for who comes in and doesn't come in. But right outside, they have what they call a city, I don't know, a gallery or something like that. It's, it's got the word city in it, okay? And, and it's, it's basically, hi, Rob. It's, Hello. it's basically this area where uh, people just kind of, hey, I'll meet you after the show in that area. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. And that's where the bomb went off awful yeah awful. it was awful and i i feel sorry for ariana grande i mean you know this is 
Oh. She is supposedly devastated by it. That area. So they canceled the rest oh. of her tour. What did you say, Brian? That area, and I was confused there for a second, but then you were alluding to uh, uh, the uh, uh, tragedy at the uh, Manchester. Uh, yeah. 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 I can understand why she would cancel the tour, as a matter of fact. Oh, but she supposedly is just... You know, I mean, and it's not her fault. There's nothing she could have done to prevent it, you know. But the question that's being asked now is, do you have a camera tonight at all, Rob? Or? Not tonight. Not tonight. Why? Because uh, you're... Because I'm in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in the dark? Well, we haven't found the light bulbs yet. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, so, oh, in other words, in you place? could turn the camera on, but we just wouldn't see anything. That's exactly right. Well, we could see a reflection. We the no, light. No, you wouldn't even. Yeah, I'll turn it on. Oh, okay. You wouldn't even see you that a flashlight wait or something. Wait a flashlight or a phone with an LED on it. Or... Wait a minute. Hold on. Well, it isn't. It's just grinding around anyway, so it's yeah. not showing a picture. But anyway, what what I was going to say is that. Oh, there you are. We can see you. Really? Yeah. You know, it's, I don't see, need we see you from the reflection in the, uh, you know, the light from your, uh, your... Oh, in the monitor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sitting in the bedroom in the dark because I, I put the lamps in, mm. and this particular lamp, it's a floor lamp, it uh, was the one I used to use in my studio. Yeah. Uh, when we turned it on, you know how what happens to bulbs when yeah. they, they break. Yeah. So I had the bulb, and boom, it broke. As soon as I flipped it on, it... Pew, flashed yeah. and i can't find oh, any of the other bulbs yet oh. was it halogen no it's just a regular incandescent light wow because sometimes you touch those halogen bulbs and the oil from your They'll fingers burn up right no, this is just a regular bulb and it got you know jostled around and chipping and as soon as i turned it on it went it flashed bright and then died so and i don't know where the other bulbs mm. are well anyway getting back to what we were talking about uh, I saw a discussion today with the guy who has run security for concerts. And the question was being asked, quite rightly so, is how is this going to affect concerts from here on in? I mean, are people going to be shy of going to them? Now, I say wow, cancel I all concerts. I, I think they'll up the security. I know at the UC Theater, they search everything. Nobody gets in with nothing. Doesn't matter. Yeah. If they want to get through, they'll get through. Yeah. You know, it only takes one slight mistake. Yeah, that's and, true. And, and it's, and it's yep. you know, we haven't had that kind of thing here yet, you know. Uh, give it, it time. It, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're working. Bin Laden's bit. son is saying that, uh, you know, he's, he's targeting the U.S. So what? He well, can say he, anything he wants to say. He may be, sit happen. may be sitting there with a finger up his ass, you know. Exactly. But, and, you know, Trump called the guy a loser. Now, I understand what he was saying, because a lot of these uh, people that get indoctrinated, even though the guy was of Libyan, Libyan descent, uh, he was uh, a, a citizen uh, of, uh, and I think he was born in England. And uh, so what happens is these guys, uh, disenfranchised kids, uh, are easily influenced and, uh, and, and indoctrinated into this ISIS stuff. And, uh, you know, then they, they go out and they do this. And they found, a, uh, they found a, a, a vest in his apartment, a suicide vest. So they're thinking that uh, there are other people involved and that there will be more of these attacks in the near future, uh, uh, maybe related to this one. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, uh, so far, England, Paris, and these have all been... Belgium. Uh, yeah, these have all been uh, concert kind of things, you know, that they've done them at. Because it's, it's a heavy concentration of people in one place. What about the Orlando uh, shooter? That's another place that was, had, was concentrated with people. It was, a, you know, it was a music venue, uh, you know. Even though it was a gay club, it was, I think, basically they had music there and so on. Yeah. I mean, any place where a great amount of people tend right. to congregate, you just shoot up, you know, you blow up a bomb and you're going to get, you know, a, a number of people. There's no question about they it. They thought this Ariana Grande uh, incident uh, would get maximum press. So and they that's why they went after kids. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just awful. Well, it of course, it's just awful. But, you know, I don't see that anything that our our president is doing is going to prevent it from happening. 
And of course, it's going to get press coverage considering that. You know, well, and as a matter of fact, if he, if his, his, uh, because he's gotten t- really tough with his words, you know, yeah. he's a pussy when it comes to actually doing anything. But, know. but, you know, when, uh, but he's very tough with his words. But what he's doing is he's literally saying, knock the, the chip off my shoulder. Come on. I think come on. Knock do it. the chip off regardless of whether it's him or well, anyone no, but else. I'm they saying, I think this. he, by, by, being that vocal in in situation like this, rather than saying this is terrible, it's horrible, you know, we're going to get these people. These people are nothing but scum of the earth, and blah blah blah. That's not exactly the way you deal with these people. But the, the rest of the world is starting to look at it and say the same thing. Even the Saudis uh, are, are are trying to do whatever they can do to uh, limit because these it's guys in their own money. best interest. Of course. Well, it's in their own best interest. The the Saudis won't do anything unless it's in their own best interest. That's where where Trump is a sucker. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, not not to vary, but the hearings this morning uh, with the uh, CIA, the old CIA director, he basically said that what the Russians were doing is they were using the uh, the liberals and their hate of Trump, uh, trying to divide and and cause them. They're basically pawns, pawns of the Russians, the liberals, by uh, creating the divisiveness that uh, that exists now. And that is what the Russians are trying. And you to believe do. this ex CIA guy? Yeah, he's the why? Uh, he was why? the head of the CIA, and he was very. He was, was he the head of the CIA, or was he? Yes. I don't believe he was the head uh, of the under CIA. Under Obama, I believe. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, Rob, do you know who I'm talking about? No. Uh, the guy who testified this morning, um, uh, I can't remember his name. But, uh, yeah, he was the CIA director uh, prior to... Uh, I thought it was FBI. No, no, he was CIA. That's another guy. This was the CIA guy. I've been uh, pretty tied up, so I haven't really paid attention to the news the last couple of days. Yeah. Well, I guess you're sitting in the dark, you know. <laughs> Former CIA chief, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who who was it? John uh, Brennan. Beat, John John Brennan. Brennan, yes. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, he also said that uh, there's no evidence of any collusion between uh, the Trump uh, Trump and uh, the Trump campaign. He said, but uh, the way the Russians try to manipulate is they uh, will go in and 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 work on people, uh, and they may not know that they were Russians uh, in in order to uh, create this uh, chaos, and that and that's what and that's what they do. He said for the first time Tuesday he was concerned about possible ties between Ru- Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You he, did, he, he recommended Wait, wait a minute. That, Hold on a second. Here's yeah. the first paragraph in a story that's uh, out of the New York Times. John uh-huh. O'Brennan, former director of the CIA, said publicly for the first time Tuesday that he was concerned about possible right. ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. He was concerned, and he asked the FBI to look into it, but he has no evidence. No, 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 but that's different than what you said. Isn't that different, Rob, than what he said originally? No, what you said originally to me was is that he didn't find any collusion collusion between Trump. The first, very first thing here was that he was concerned about possible ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. He was concerned, but that doesn't mean he found any evidence to tie the Trump campaign, and he said he did not find any evidence. So you read what you okay. want to see. Okay, Mr. Brennan, the former CIA director, said Tuesday that he became concerned last year that the Russian government was trying to influence members of the Trump campaign to act wittingly or unwittingly on Moscow's behalf. Yes, unwittingly. Yeah, uh, I encountered and am aware of information and intelligence that revealed contacts and interactions between Russian officials and U.S. persons involved in the Trump campaign that I was concerned about because of known Russian efforts to suborn such individuals. That's, but, that's what he said, not what but, you're saying what about he the said. Proof? Read, read further. Uh, did, did he say that there was no evidence? Well, I'm not uh, going to read the whole article here on the air. If you want to hear him, I can, I, I can go to his speech. You know, I raised questions in my mind about whether Russia was able to gain the cooperation of those individuals, he said, adding he did not know whether the Russian efforts were successful. In other words, he just Correct. says he doesn't know. Right. 
So, but you know. but no, but it's not like what you said that he went. Oh, you know, uh, uh, the Trump campaign uh, didn't do that. It was just the Russians trying to get a a stronghold of one sort or another. They were un unwittingly or. Rob, am I crazy? What did I just read? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention he at said, the moment. He, he said something. he saw contact. But that doesn't necessarily mean no, no, that no, there you're, was collusion. But you're collusion. trying to put words in his mouth. You're doing. You're doing what the Trump campaign complains that uh, uh, that the press does, and that's putting words in his mouth. Hello, Kevin. Turn on your camera. Yeah, I'm trying. I may have to call back. Oh, okay. All right. So he, he says that he was concerned that they were being manipulated by Russian intelligence services, part of a broader effort effort to influence yeah. the campaign. And they sought to disrupt the election and uh, deliver presidency to Trump. That, but what the issue is, is did Trump, was he complicit? Well, no, we're not asking that question right now. The big, biggest question is, did members of the Trump campaign involve themselves with Russian operatives? And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether Trump did it or not. I'm sure Trump kept himself a mile away from the problem. You know, okay. I mean, uh, he, he, let's face it. The guy at the top is going to be the, have the uh, is going to have the biggest distance between himself and conviction. Well, okay. Uh, he says that uh, that the Russians brazenly interfered in our presidential campaign pro process, mm -hmm. and uh, he said at one point uh, several uh, moments in, uh, into you know, his. You can word, read all you want to, but what what squarely at the president? But, but what you're not. Just, you're, we knew that. We knew that, and he was just asking the FBI to look into it, but that doesn't uh, uh, convict Trump of anything. Huh? What do you mean it doesn't convict Trump of anything? Well, because, uh, you know, just because the Russians tried to influence doesn't necessarily mean that Trump was complicit. With All that. he's saying is the very first I thing that was said here is <clears throat> that he was concerned about a possible tie between the Russians and the Trump campaign. Okay? Yes, that was part of it, and that's why he alerted the yeah. FBI. Boy. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Hel uh, Je uh, Jeff, turn on your camera, and we can oh, we can see you, and so can me. all of America who is watching this on uh, on uh, on the on the internet with our our Facebook uh, feed. Um, Any better? Yeah. Uh, is your camera off, Alex? I guess it might be. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it is for some reason, but now it's on. So. We'll like to see you. Well, there it is. Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice of you to let me know later. And, and Jeff's in a darker area tonight than he normally is in. Why That's is that? True. Are you somewhere else? I'm outside. Oh, you're outside. Right. How nice and airy that is, you know? So, anyway. Okay, I will see you on the other side. Mm hmm. Hey, Brian's going to call us back from his, uh, his abode. Um, what other side? Is Roger Moore on the other side? Huh? No, Roger hey. Moore is gone. Um, so anyway, um, so we have Phil Meyer, we have Kevin, we have Rob Alfano, Jeff Stein, and anybody else who wants to call, we would love to hear from you. But uh, I did not see that today, but my wife watched it, and she seemed to feel that, you know, he was not convinced that, uh, that uh, the Trump people didn't have something to do with it or weren't being influenced by the Russians or, or being used by the Russians. Isn't that bad enough? Well, it may be, uh, you know, they may have tried, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he did anything. Oh, I think they were successful, you know. They were very successful with, uh, with for instance, uh, using, uh, what's his name over there, WikiLeaks as, as a... Uh, Assange. Uh, Assange as a, uh, a go-between to oh. go after Hillary. Since I'm the only one here that voted for Trump, yeah. I say unequivocally that I was not influenced by the Russians in any way, shape, or form to place my vote with Trump. Sure you were. <laughs> sure you were. Nah, I, yes. I, you know, I had... Uh, Subconsciously, I mean, Trump hey, did you, hear, did you hear about the Hillary stuff coming from WikiLeaks? Yeah. Okay, but well... That changed that, my support for Trump. Well, yeah, probably because you, you, you're a sexist and you didn't want to see a woman as president. No, I, I supported Trump early. <laughs> what? I supported Trump early. Yeah. Well, that means early, early stupidity is not something I would really t lay large claim uh, to. Uh, all right. So the only way you can fight it is by calling people stupid. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't think anybody here would disagree with me when I say that you were stupid. 
Well, I, I think you were all pawns of the Russians. You know, I think we, you guys were all manipulated and are all pawns of the Russians, and they got you to do exactly what they're trying to do, and you're still falling into their trap by uh, with this divisiveness, calling the other side stupid instead of, uh, you know, working together. Working for, together? I have no intention of working with this piece of shit. <laughs> well, hey, the Russians have got you, uh, you know. No, they haven't got me on thing. anything. I, I don't, I don't want to deal with that piece of shit. What, what All right, it, comrade, you know. Comrade. What is that armband for <laughs> hand, uh, that you, you have, Rob? What's that? You ha you're wearing a wristband. Oh, I, I donated a little bit of money at Costco today, and they gave it to me. What, what does it say? Uh, I gave it Costco. <laughs> no, it says uh, I, I gave to a children's hospital. And it says, grew, what does it say? I can't even read it in the dark here. <laughs> Grow up stronger. Do you get two of them? Huh? <laughs> Do you have to buy two? No. <laughs> I, I think they asked me if I wanted to give money to that, and I said, fuck no. You know. <laughs> They, I, I hate it when they. I hate it when they hit me up at the uh, checkout. Yeah, stand. I don't like it either. But it's something you know, with a big cause, so. because you're you're a little vulnerable to begin with. Most people feel vulnerable because they got people in back of them who see them to go. Ah, fuck the kids. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know. You know hey, so the guy behind me figured I was an asshole anyway. So when I said no, he was just proven right. Yeah, <laughs> but um, um, so uh, you know, I mean, but the question again, I, I bring this up: Is this going to affect concert going? You know, I mean, are people going to be a little more careful about going to large Some events? Some people will. Some people will. Other people will have the attitude of they're not gonna, they're not going to change my life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I've already, you know, pretty much in the back of my mind said, I don't think I'm going to get, go to Europe for a while, if ever again. You know, well, we're uh, probably going to go there in the fall. As much as I love Paris, I don't think I want to go back. You know, um, uh, that's, uh, I don't think, uh, like, we're going to go to uh, uh, girlfriend's talking about when she's through with her conference in uh, Hong Kong rather than coming back. The short way, going, coming back the long way, or, or at least having the plane, take the plane to uh, Barcelona, and mm -hmm. then we can have a little vacation in Barcelona. I, nice. I don't have any fear of that, you know. Well, Barcelona, no. Uh, I wouldn't have any fear of being in Paris or, or, or England or whatever. I mean, huh? Listen, I take, the, I take the subways every week here in New York just to go to my physical therapy. If there's any target that's just rife for this thing, it would be the New York subway system. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the Times Square thing that didn't have anything to do with terrorism. No, it? that was just a guy who was high on some kind of drug. PCP. The PCP. Oh. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my mm -hmm. cousin lives over in Germany. Mm -hmm. I was talking to her about that during Christmas, and she said that those people out there are just so resilient. Those yeah. things happen, and yeah. they say, oh, no, and they mourn it. But three days later, she said she was back in Berlin on the same street. That whole thing happened uh, was around Christmas time, I guess. Mm -hmm. She says, yeah, she was just walking around there. You know, everybody was just doing their own thing, and it seems that that's, you know, that's the way that they treat it over well, there. They, well, I think that there's there's a general feeling among people. But we're not going to let these people slow us down. We're not going to let them change our lives. We're yeah. going to continue with our lives as they are because the chances of getting killed are, you know. Well, in, in England today, they were uh, having a, a solidarity uh, a deal where everybody got together and uh, sing Kumbaya. But that doesn't do anything to uh, weed out these yes, people. Yes, but that's also, it's not going to stop them, but it's going to make people at least feel a certain kinship with each other and a certain solidarity with each other, which is something I'm sure, as a Trump supporter, you don't understand. <laughs> well, i got solidarity with other Trump supporters. Because they're all just losers, right? No, no <laughs> just, just the uh, people that are getting indoctrinated by ISIS uh, you know, are, are, are people that can be influenced. Did you, by the way, did you hear, yeah. Phil, I think you should write a letter to your pal Donald and uh, tell the Donald that it would be a good idea if he was going to be a world leader, if he knew more about the world, 
and maybe use some bigger words. Yeah, I, and, and and not make the colossal mistake that he made when uh, I think he wound up in, uh, yeah, he wound up in Israel, yeah. and he said that we just came here from the Middle East. Yeah, exactly. I was going to bring that up. Not realizing, of course, that Israel is in the Middle East. <laughs> Minutia. What? That's not minutia. That's stupidity. When you tell people who live in the Middle East, I just came here from the Middle East. That means he didn't read his uh, his itinerary book or his his, his uh, history he, book. He or did what? not know. He did not know, yeah, and he was he he did not uh, know that I, Israel I, was in the Middle East. He, in I, fact, somebody think, said that. <laughs> I think that yeah, he probably knew it's in the Middle East, and you were just beating them up over. Oh, he was just a little joke on Trump. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I see. Like yeah, <laughs> and and by the way, did you see that great shot of them getting off the plane? I think it was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, oh, she Mel pushed his hand away. Melania, yeah, when he wanted to grab her hand to walk yeah. with her, and she slapped it and said, "Don't touch me." Uh, we don't know what he did on the plane. Well, we don't know what was going on there, but she went boom. And it, 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 they it ran that on television over and over. You and know, over it could have been again. because in Saudi Arabia, you do not want public displays of affection. And maybe. Believe uh, me, she, that wasn't what Melania was doing. No, no, she was keeping him from holding her hand. I and, see, I uh, see. Because it might have been a faux pas. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. She, like she knows and, such shit. Well, she knew to cover her heart when they sung the national Listen, anthem. Listen, if, if he didn't get elected president, they'd be in divorce court right now. They would be. She does not look like a happy woman. No, she didn't look happy. But uh, you know, you never know when you when you see a shot like that. It's just a, a second or two out of uh, out of the deal. Who knows what happened thirteen seconds later? The only thing she can, it doesn't it doesn't have is a trophy wife or handles on either side of her. You know. <laughs> well, I think she's a pretty smart gal. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know that's that's what they seem to say about her. Well, I don't I don't think she's yeah. stupid. You? No, I don't think she's stupid. I think that she's Hungarian or whatever she is. Uh, uh, not no, uh, no Hungarian. She's yeah. from some co country near there. Yeah, she's a Slav. Sylvania. Uh, she's a, a Slav. Uh, good natured it's, Slav. It's the country that has five different countries. Yeah, <laughs> country that has five was it, was different. Yugoslavia countries. Yugoslavia at one yeah. time, and they broke yeah. it up. But yeah. I, ju I just think it would be good on on uh, on uh, Trump's part if if he learned about the rest of the world and that he in fact was still in the Mid East when he was in Israel, and that's what the problem is. If Israel were like in Europe, oh, we wouldn't be having that problem. He thought he was down uh, down off uh, you know, the southern uh, part of Manhattan. And by the way, somebody should sit down with him. I think he's just lazy, okay? But somebody should sit down with him. I saw him give his speech to the, uh, 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 to the Saudis, okay? And I said to myself, God, I wish Obama was given this speech. You know, because yeah. he does no, not know how to read a speech. He is terrible at it. And, you know, all he needs all he needs is to sit down with a coach who can kind of get him, you know, in the right direction when he's giving a speech. But he gives a speech that is so red, it's dull to listen to. Remember when you used to read in school? They used to make us read in school, like read page the next two pages. Yeah. It almost looks like they're doing that to him and he's struggling. Right. You still got your weekly reader? And he That's tries right, to yeah. throw in the either he tries to throw in the ad libs or they're there. I can't figure it out. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, he does throw in the That's ad libs. Style. He tries. No, he tries. Really what, but the trouble is, I think every time he goes off script for even a second, they start sweating fucking bullets. <laughs> yeah. You know, because they don't know what he's going to say. And, and I think like that thing about we just flew in from the Middle East was him ad libbing. That wasn't scripted. He probably thought he lived in Brooklyn. He lives in Queens. I live in Brooklyn. <laughs> I wonder what he says when he gets into Marlago. I just flew in from. <laughs> <He's so stupid. laughs> There's something about people that are in the south and they say, uh, or, or they're going down south and they say, I'm going up to uh, Florida. You know, they're in New York. Yeah. I'm going up to Florida. Yeah. And, you know, I never heard anybody made, ever right? say that. They all say we're going down to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're going east. No, actually, no. No, there are there are people that do. The that only people that say they're coming up to Florida are the people in Cuba. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I, I I've heard a lot of people in New York say they're going up to Florida. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it'd be up if you go around the other way. Yeah. Let me see here. Here, 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 here comes Brian again. Let's see if this time it looks like looks like Brian's on board this time. Hi, yeah, Kevin yeah. knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's up north, back east, out west, down south. Yeah. 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 Uh, wait a minute. We have a little slight. Oh, I, well, we don't have it anymore. Thought we had a problem we'll here. Stop that. Brian, turn on your camera. It is on, isn't it? No. Right, yeah. I got a weird thing going on with mine because I, I got the dots bringing around Tony and Jeff. Yeah. I've had that oh. for weeks. And then mine mine is not showing. I'm spinning on the bottom corner of mine, but I can see it on Facebook. But you yeah, no, see. you're you're all fine except for Brian yeah. hasn't gotten his Still, camera going yet. I'm not touching anything. Yeah. I clicked yeah. the camera icon off. Yeah. On again. Yeah, it's uh, how, uh, uh, Jeff, how do you feel our president has done on his little trip? Has he hit the Has he hit the Vatican yet? Uh, that's that's oh, today. God I think. <laughs> okay. And I tell you what, I think the Pope is going to rip him an punch asshole. Him right in the nose. I, I think the it's been I known think, to do that. I the Pope think to support him. The, the Pope right. uh, has. Uh, I I will not let him get away with anything. The, the Pope actually came out against Trump during the. No, he uh, came Trump. out. It came out against. What was it? Oh, uh, the Mexican thing. No, but he, yeah, he said it was yeah. not. If he, he was, was, if he was a religious man, he's not particularly religious. If he doesn't believe in the in the sanctity Christian. of the human being, you know. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't Christian or something. Uh, yeah, that was uh, something to that effect. Well, it'd be interesting to see how the Pope reacts to. Well, the Pope's going to see him. The Pope's going to see him. Yeah, you know. Um, I what I would do is let him come all the way to to Italy and yeah. and to the Vatican, and then when he gets there, say I don't want to see him. Just don't answer the door. He'll kiss the ring, huh? Think he'll kiss the ring? I, I no, he didn't bow to the Saudis. I, I wonder if he'll kiss the ring. Yeah, he was swinging a sword around there for a while. The, oh, yeah. the oh, the sword dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ceremony. Yeah, that was hilarious. He was looking silly, you know. Uh, we have a goofy ass president. I guess that's part of the job, right? What's not so goofy is what he's going to propose in the next week or so. Oh yeah, which he's is going to get rid of all of that bullshit. Yeah, he's going to get rid of all that bullshit, <laughs> but he's going to pay for some other bullshit. He is yeah, he's yeah. building a wall that's costing many times. He's asking for many times the amount of billions of dollars that Medicare costs. One point seven billion down payment. Yeah, down payment on what? The wall. Mm -hmm. What else is he getting rid of? The uh, NEA. Oh yeah, we, yeah. Get get rid of the National Endowment for the Arts. Get away. Get rid of anything that has intelligence attached uh, to public it. Public radio. Yeah, uh, national uh, public radio. You know. Yeah. Get rid of them all. Some, uh, some federal housing stuff. Oh, but who needs who needs housing is, places for people? Street. You know. Yeah. Well, what he's saying is that the federal government shouldn't be involved in those things. It should be handled by the states. And Why? the federal government should be pared Why? down because they should Why? handle things that have federal nature. You know? <laughs> that, that, no that sense. Are... Hey, so i got to tell like you I something. Said, anything... Get 50 entities to agree on anything. There are so certain like said, things that should be handled centrally. And some places are going to treat their people very well, like California, and other places like, oh, I don't know, uh, hmm. North Dakota Pencil or someplace Tucky. like that, Pennsylvania will fuck. treat their people like shit. You, well, know, you know, we need. When I go, on, go down to Florida, yeah, I get on Route 95. Yeah, I it know. starts for me in Connecticut, right? Then it goes to New York, mm -hmm. then New Jersey, yeah, and they never change the name. It's I-95. It yeah. seems to run about the same. Yeah. Which means it's a federal program. That's an interstate highway. That's different than a federal housing program. Uh, what's, wrong What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it as well, long as it has to go from state to state because that's, that's something that the federal... But some states may say, we don't want to house people, and other states may say, it's our solemn duty to do it. And now you have an, you have an inefficiency around the country. One state is different than another state. People are going to be hopping from state to state to be able to survive. Yeah. And if you don't you like right. you know. in that state, you vote those guys what's, out. What's wrong with housing? What's wrong with taking care of people? Wrong what's wrong, wrong with spending our... Uh, 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 Phil, Phil, what's wrong with spending our money on stuff that helps human beings 
uh, live better and mm. live healthier and and live in decent conditions. I mean, what what are we so but, selfish? You're being a selfish well, prick. I want federal government let That's the, the states Republican handle platform, it. Alex. Yeah, the, I, it's I the like it's the selfish prick well, platform. No, That's Iran capitalism. You're, you're, to be more precise, you're, you're yeah. talking from a total emotional state, and you're not thinking logically. Well, I'm thinking. Don't tell emotional. me I'm not thinking logically. I think logically about everything, Phil. I'm one yeah, of the most logical why? thinkers you know. You're not being a logical thinker because you don't even know what logical thinking entails. Okay. I want. Well, yeah, that's, there's a newsflash: we're not machines, government. we're not robots. Last I want, time I checked. That, but listen, listen to Brian. He has something to say to you, Phil. I have, sorry. Go well, ahead. Brian. First, first, what I'm trying to say, like, uh, the, like I said a few weeks ago on this program, um, well, what the hell? Why not just go back to the first Continental Congress, see how that works out a second time around, and then we can see what, just like the first time around, only with 50 states instead of 13, where um, you know each state goes eventually goes to war with every other state because of uh you know trade disputes and and feuds and you know that way all the other countries around the world least of all um uh, today into today's sense context north korea and iran can uh you know whip their uh, whip their collective cocks out and jerk all over us and that's, all the while laugh at us that's what the federal government last should. time regarding the the whole logical argument bullshit that would work if we were machines, but the last time I checked, we weren't machines. You prick yourself in the arm, you're going to bleed. You're not going to bleed. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't see. I don't see the correlation, uh, Brian. I, I don't see the correlation between uh, machine and human uh, when it comes to a federal and state and and who is in charge of those programs and uh, why the federal government should be involved uh, with things in individual states. You know, only interstate highway. The defense uh, libraries. The national no, I, I I I agree with Brian. No interstate highways because under your plan, there's no such thing. There should be no such thing. No, that's not true. No, what when I the when, no, when the, the highway when the highway place. gets to Pennsylvania, it's Pennsylvania's job to take care of it. And then when it gets down to uh, Rob's neck of the woods, it's that neck of the woods' job mm -hmm. to take care of it. And what do you know? You'll go from one highway that's rutted and pockmarked and got pock, uh, you know, deep pockets in it, and then you'll get to the one that's really ni done, nicely done because that state decides to take care of it. That's, well, that's what's wrong with now. your logic, Phil. Well, that's the way it is now. But, you know, uh, just uh, to counter uh, Jeff, one, one time I drove from New York to Florida, and uh, I-95 hadn't been finished at that time, and there was a place called well, 301. Well, they didn't have it ready by the time the prehistoric era was over. <laughs> well, uh, Highway 301 went through Ludowicki, Georgia, and that was a speed trap. You, had anybody ever driven through Ludowicki, where it goes from uh, 75 to 35? No. Uh, how much? How fast were you going? I was doing 120. Oh, my God. She doesn't even get to the speed <laughs> and it was as fast as the car would go. But I got passed by a uh, Corvette and a Firebird, and the cop pulled over the Corvette and Firebird, and I went through. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, wow. was, uh, that, was a, that was a good evening. Wow. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's amazing. Oink, oink. Yeah, it took me 24 hours to drive from New York to Miami straight. Wow. I have some stories here that I actually, I actually have prep here. Ooh. Oh, Let's hear it for me. Uh, hey, Brian, you still can't get your camera on? Who, me? Brian. Oh, Brian. Oh, for the love of you. Tell me this. I can What's that for, Phil? Yeah, there, there you go. We heard it for you. <laughs> can you turn on your camera, Brian, or what? I have turned on my camera. I'm just wondering what the hell else is. Can anybody else see me? No, no, uh, no! It doesn't even go around no. when you turn on your camera. Oh, shit! Looks like you're in the car. I'll tell you. Oh, and there we go. There we go, there Brian. Goes. There we go. There now we now can see back. you. Now we can see you. Oh, yeah. I'll be fucked. Yeah. Well, Everybody's I mean, still got the spinning dots. If, you're, if you'll be fucked, then you're a very lucky guy. Um, Depends by who, or what. <laughs> um, well, well if you here, agree with Alex, it'll be Trump. Yeah, let me see here. Um, I'd rather be shot. It's interesting that um, Stephen Colbert, who, by the way, has now for the this year, television year, 
become the number one late night show. For, for, in other words, at the end of the year, they came out with a slightly larger audience than Jimmy Fallon. At the beginning of the year, they weren't doing all that well, and then all of a sudden, they're doing very well, and he's um, he's beating out uh, Jimmy Fallon. Who... It's all the anti-Trump stuff. It's the same thing with Saturday Night Live. Well, I saw um, a clip of uh, Fallon, who finally decided to cave in and try and do political comedy. Yeah, yeah. Pathetic. Yeah. Just absolutely pathetic. Didn't the FCC say that they weren't going to place sanctions on uh, uh, on Colbert because of the uh, Trump statements today? Right. They're right. No actions. Well, no well, action. Yeah. Well, they better not put any actions. Well, they're they're not not about to the level of pie something. That's it, yeah, they didn't say it rose to the level of obscenity. That cheap pie, however. Well, the FCC right now rises to the level of obscenity, but that's another story right. altogether. Because of San Jiz pie. But anyway, uh, Stephen Colbert took time off from the Trump jokes and got real about his views on Donald Trump during a live appearance on Saturday before a crowd of a few hundred people at the mm -hmm. Vulture Festival. Colbert described the professional and emotional exhaustion of trying to perform nightly comedy in the chaos of the Trump era. It's also petty and venal, and there's nothing grand about it, Colbert said. It's not Shakespearean all at all. It's Veep. Um, Colbert was interviewed by Frank Rich, an executive producer on Veep, an executive producer on Veep. Colbert recounted the painful experience of hosting the live election night special on Showtime after preparing material based on the expectation that Hillary Clinton would be elected. Uh, he said that it was some of the most bizarre live television I've ever been a part of. Colbert recalled that about 20 minutes into the election night, he had a conversation off screen with his producer who said, no more jokes, stop with the jokes. Uh, <laughs> Since Rich Colbert's Late Show's up. ratings have surged in recent months, Rich asked whether on some level Colbert might be secretly glad Trump won the election. No, Colbert answered. We don't approach Donald Trump as like, what a wonderful cheesy gravy meal we have here for you today. The Post adds, he described the country under Trump as on fire. The comedian in his analogy was a guy who dances next to the fire and says, let's all admit this is on fire. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's his feelings about it. So did you hear about about the founder of Twitter? What he had to say. No. This is this is interesting. Is he going to take away Trump's account? No. <laughs> in an interview with the New York Times, in which he suggests the internet is broken, Twitter founder Evan Williams called Twitter's role in the rise of Donald Trump a very bad thing, and added. If it's true that he wouldn't be president if it weren't for Twitter, then yeah, I'm sorry. I thought once everybody could speak freely and exchange information and ideas, the world is automatically going to be a better place, Williams told the paper. I was wrong about that. The report adds, the trouble with the internet, Mr. Williams says, is that it rewards extremes. Say you're driving down the road and you see a car crash. Of course you look, everyone looks. The internet interprets behavior like this to mean everyone is asking for car crashes. So it tries to supply them. As damn near everyone is. What, what, do you th what do you think about that, guys? That's interesting. I, mean, I think if it was I mean, Trump, said, Twitter, Twitter would probably be out of business. They said that uh, you know 20 years ago that email would revolutionize productivity and how many people would have it easy 20 years later when here we are 20 years later doing more work than we've done before and uh, not getting paid as much or or with stagnant wages and Kevin yes I yeah absolutely and further on back you know people said the same thing about you know video recording a video camera radio talk radio and you know that movie talk radio that Oliver Stone did basically uh, you know that Eric Bogosian character uh, hit the nail on the head was basically saying the same thing you had uh, stated via your, that article you were reading Alex mm -hmm. only uh, you know through a different through the medium of talk radio where it's a rewarding extremes and people are uh, you know just you know mm -hmm. broadcasting their disgustingness for lack of a better word yeah well uh, uh, it, you know I mean we have gotten to the point where uh, he's, he is right I mean uh 
Don't say we've reached a new low though, because 20 years from now we may even go lower. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And 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 uh, uh, Phil, uh, Trump didn't make Twitter. Twitter did make Trump. The, Twitter didn't benefit financially. Twitter was dying. If, before no, Trump. they weren't dying. Where do you get that? Where do you get your they, information? They were this close to being out of business. Uh, no, uh, did you hear that? Did you ever hear that, um, Rob? Did you hear that? I, I never heard that. It stopped. Did you, was in the did you ever hear that, that, Kevin? They were having troubles, but yeah, Trump's sure as hell didn't have anything to do with it. Well, you I know, don't, I don't we, see why Trump, why that would even matter. Really. Before Trump, I never even looked at Twitter. Uh, you know, I had a Twitter. I still account. don't. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. You just barely. look at the news headlines. I think yeah. I think Facebook is a far more valuable tool, so far as I'm concerned. I think both of them are horrible. Really? Well, you you don't have a Facebook account I'm, anymore, do I you, don't Rob? Agree with Rob. I think they're both terrible for our for our society. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, the I, human I, race is terrible for our society. Well, that's true yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> but you give them a tool. You give them a tool like Facebook or Twitter, and it just puts everybody in the toilet it's it's kind of like you rate. give him a tool like somebody like trump yeah well that's you know, <laughs> aren't those things kind of like road rage and people say things and do things that on twitter and 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 facebook that they would never do face to face absolutely absolutely the internet in general the internet keyboard, in general. keyboard terrorists you know, it's the same keyboard thing like warriors, people in their cars warriors. they do things they'd sooner cut you off into oncoming traffic than to let you change lanes yeah and, you see uh, Face to face, that won't happen. Yeah, exactly. It brings oh, out the hear. worst of humanity. But yeah. I have noticed that that it's getting to the point where I think people are getting a little bit more ballsy because of social media and things like that. They'll bump you around in the grocery store. They'll go in and steal that parking place and be willing to, you know, take you on. Like before, you would just say, "I oh, don't worry about it," and I'll go get another spot and drive on. Right. These fuckers are getting out of their cars and. And taking people on, yeah, uh, you know, and and for me, I uh, I had that happen to me the other day. Guy took the play. I'm sitting there, the blinkers on. I'm sitting there. This guy comes around the corner, sees a space, pulls right in, and so you know. But I said to myself, I'm not going to take anything personally. The guy doesn't know who I am. He yeah. doesn't know anything about me. You know, maybe he needed the space worse than I did. So you know, yeah, I uh, went down a that, block. That's that's the difference between an asshole and the halfway decent person i've had that happen trying to get into my but let me let me spot. ask you this yes. let me ask you this what kind of national mindset has trump created at least among his followers i think i, I didn't take the spot wait a minute <laughs> do you root what what, 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 wait a minute. I, what were you going to say tony tony had, i was going to answer that i was going to try to answer the question mm -hmm. uh I think his followers, and this, I'm going to leave Phil out because I don't really mean Phil by this. No, include Phil. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think they're very, how can I try to phrase it? Not all of them. I would say they're very arrogant, maybe. Maybe a lot of frustration. And they feel like they're, he's speaking for them. I see a lot of hatred, really. Well, mm -hmm. I, think, I think he gives bad behavior a sense of permission. Personally, I think some. I think people have been hiding in the woodwork. I think yeah, I think they've always been pulled them out. out. Trump yeah. pulled them out. That's yeah. a good point. The By the way, let me say to Jeff because Jeff is in the dark, and so is Rob. If either of you want to say something, just jump in, okay? okay. Because it, I, yeah, I you can't, can't see me at all. Well, no, I can I'm see you, coach. but I but but it's it's faint, and uh, you know. So. Well, he's not lit the uh, well the great way he's always lit, but uh, oh, usually he's lit beautifully, and so is Rob, actually. You know what the yeah. sad part is too. Rob now looks like he has a halo because the uh, the screen is reflecting <laughs> off the back of his. For one reason or another, I'm only getting Rob's still picture. Really? Well, it's too bad that you. I, have I think you know what it is, Alex. I think, like you said, why the hatred's there. It's Trump's attitude. It's very divisive. Every time he talks, he always has to insult somebody. Well, yeah, you that, know, in some way. Brennan yeah. said today that this device divisiveness is it was uh, a uh, function of what the Russians are trying to do, and they're trying to get uh, the left and the right. I to, wouldn't blame uh, the divisiveness in this yeah, country yeah. on on. I'm just on, quoting Brennan on the uh, the but, fuck but, them fuck you know Brennan. What? You know, the, quite quite frankly, the the the, the truth for me. 
has to do with Donald Trump and not the Russians, because I despise Donald Trump. I listen to him hear I hear him speak and my skin crawls. And this is because of Donald Trump. It has nothing to do with the Russians. It's because of his words and his actions and his thoughts. And you have to I don't give a damn he's the president of the United States. He has to earn respect. The office has respect. And I think he's shitting all over it and the White House and this country. Well, and I, I, that's how I feel about Donald Trump. But Rob, I look at this a little differently. I look oh, at no the shit. Fact that his his being there is is supporting a way of life that I believe in, which is pure if, selfishness. No, no, it's not selfishness. It's it's called tough love. Now, you see, I believe that if you do something for somebody that should be able to do it for themselves, you're making them weaker. I agree and, with you. And so therefore, if they could do it for themselves. And I believe that most no, people no, could no, if they didn't. Oh, you're uh, such a are. you're so white. You're so white. And you're so just middle right. class. I think everybody's born with a silver spoon in their mouths. No, but what you don't realize is that no, no, not everybody is born the same. You come That's in with the nothing. Problem. You come in with nothing. You go out with nothing. And, yeah, and, and you, you're you born do. to parents of <laughs> no money and no education, living in squalor. And what do you expect of those kids? Well, I, the same thing I expect of anyone else. three strikes against you my, before you my, even take your first father, breath. My father died when I was 17. Uh, and, you know, I, uh, I did everything on my own. When he died, he was 44. Uh, you know, your father gave, ran a business. Well, he ran a business that my mother had to close because of the mafia. And, and hey, you know something, uh, you're 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 make, you're breaking my heart. I've got a I've got a friend who used to call my show at the, at at uh, Sirius XM, and he yeah. wrote something the other day that's on Facebook. His name is Wes Baggett, B A G G B A G G E T T or B A G E T T. Anyway, go find Wes and look at this thing he wrote about his life yeah. and how his life was. And how they had nothing. I mean, nothing. It was it not even clean water. I mean, life was terrible. And somehow he's managed to work himself out of that. Well, but, you know, don't tell me about your little wee wee. My father died. My mother lost the business. You know, there was a business to lose. Yes, you still grew That's up. In okay. The there was a business to lose. My parents were high school graduates. Uh, I, they were immigrants. I, I, I never <laughs> finished college. I, I was a freshman, not <laughs> different junior colleges, and uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't you don't get the root cause of it though, Phil. You're not understanding the root cause. You're born in a project, or worse, mm. you have parents who are drug addicts. They bring you along. They you're you've got three strikes against you before you've even learned to walk. Well, what do you, you expect know, from these kids? They go into drugs because it's the only way to make a nickel. They don't have some, any education. They never had anybody some, point them in the right direction. No some, mentoring, no anything. At some point in your life, you can't keep blaming your parents. You just have to be responsible for your you uh, decisions. So again, that, that's, you're looking at some sort of utopic world, but uh -huh. the world isn't like that. Yeah, well, all I know you give is people a chance. Yeah, so you got to give them a chance, and you and you can't just cripple them by by t putting them on welfare for three, four education. generations. Education, give them education. Don't give them vouchers that they then have to spend extra money that they don't have. Give them a good public education, and take them through college, and then give them an opp give them opportunity. If you don't give people opportunity. They're just going to fall. They're going to fall back into what is around them. Gangs in addition and drugs. To let, let me read this thing. Let me read this thing. Let me read this thing that Wes wrote. OK, it's, it'll take about uh, maybe two minutes. It says, you know, I read every day here on Facebook about the people and their problems. I can emphasize somewhat with them. But in saying that, let me share a little life story. I was born at a home in a small town in Tennessee with a midwife present. We moved to a coal mine camp in Mullenberg County, Kentucky, when my parents separated. We lived in a four-room shack with an outhouse, eight people total. My grandfather worked in the coal mines back in the, when the canaries were the alarm system for methane using carbide lanterns. 
We ate each other, we ate either grits or biscuits and gravy for breakfast, no lunch, and beans and potatoes every night for supper. Notice I said every night. We were the extreme poor of the times. I remember when the women made dresses out of flower sacks, went barefoot all the time, and played in the woods. Almost got my finger cut off playing with an axe, and my mom straightened it, applied a poultice, and that was uh, it. No doctor, no nothing. Hold on a second. I have to to answer the uh, call of of Renee. Hello, Renee. Hold on a second. Let me go on with this letter here. It's crooked today, his finger. Uh, We got a little candy and fruit for Christmas, and we were grateful for it. Our treats were blackberries in a clean rag with a little sugar that we called sugar tits. My mom died when I was four, and we moved back with my dad and his new wife, who just happened to be a psychopath. I've been basically on my own since I was around 15, spent my late teens as a wayward youth, getting in all kinds of troubles of my own doing. I met my late wife uh, at 18, who made a man out of me, and we had three children. I lost my baby from SIDS and my oldest son in a car wreck when he was 19. My daughter gave me three wonderful grandchildren, of whom I am extremely proud. Uh, I come from a hard scrabble family who always handled all their problems straight on, never asking for any government help. My late wife died 10 years ago from lung cancer, and she told me to remarry as soon as possible. In fact, I remember when he was calling the show, and his wife just died, and he, his wife literally told him, go out and find another wife, okay, because you're too fucking crazy to be by yourself. <laughs> crazy in a good way, though. I remarried a sweet, wonderful woman I met, and now I've been married to her for nine years. I am the sum of my, all my parts and proudly stand on the shoulders of my ancestral family who did things the right way. I have many acquaintances, I, wait a minute, I have many acquaintances and buddies, but very few friends. I'm a walking oxymoron being a sociable, sociable antisocial. I like people, but I'm comfortable by myself. And also, this is your life, folks. Do the best you can with it and leave good memories to those who leave behind, you leave behind. This is it, not a dress rehearsal, just my little rant. Have a great life, Wes. I thought that was some great writing. Yeah, it is. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, the fact that he came from that background and survived it is, uh, to me, amazing, okay? It proves that everybody can. No, it doesn't prove that everybody can. They, they may not be millionaires, but they Phil, they can Phil, they can not put every on the table if they get a job and, and work hard and and decide He's that the they're not going to do drugs. The they're not going to take the easy way you out. You know something? Bullshit, 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 Phil. Uh, Some people are born into situations they just can't get out of, right. and you have to know that. Renee, <clears throat> you there? So yes, hi everyone. Yeah, turn on your camera. I thought I had my camera on. Yeah, so here's not. the deal. Okay, Phil. Last year, Ohio, there's a 14-year-old girl who has been nothing but abused by her father verbally, physically, the mother verbally, physically, the other daughter, the cousin physically, verbally. The 14-year-old girl walks up to her dad while her dad, her dad was sleeping. She shot him directly in the head. Now what led up to all that she asked for help she went to her teacher and asked for help she went to counselors and asked for help so now what happens that shithole state of ohio you little bat white bastards over there want to charge her with adult crimes for killing a man that did nothing but beat the shit out of people and you're telling me that your life compares to that in any way shape or form so now she's in prison they finally got her out of prison and she's gone into the psychiatric well excuse me out of prison adult prison and brought her into juvenile area and now she's finally gets to speak to a counselor and learn what happened and what she did and what she could have done which was she tried as many things as the 14 year old could try and luckily and luckily 
there's enough people behind her that are standing there saying, fuck you white men. This poor little girl gets a break. She doesn't get to be abused by this black bastard that calls her her dad. And she doesn't get to be abused by the legal system in the state of Ohio. And they're still working on that. Renee sounds like white guilt to me. But, you know, uh, oh, the, the, the system Bill. failed this gal, but that no. has nothing to do with the they fact that Ohio, do you know Ohio has the largest she could have amount? chosen another way to go. Uh, Ohio has the largest amount of female drug addicts in any state in the United States to the women of Ohio that are drug, ad drug addicts. It probably wasn't you. The and white men that you're speaking to are nothing but jackasses. Clean yourself up. Get the fuck out of those shit house states. It's the it's the scourge of drugs. Uh, nope. You look at West Virginia, uh, or yeah. no, it, it, New Hampshire has some of the uh, highest re uh, uh, amount of heroin addicts and opioid I addicts. I think you're wrong about New Hampshire. It's Vermont. Uh -huh. It's Vermont, same thing. No, it's like. not the same thing, Phil. You get your facts right, okay? Talk to each other. Get your facts right. Talk to me about this 14 year old girl, was almost, she was in an adult prison. She was there. She was in an adult prison, and she almost got tried as an adult. Because. Now, why because didn't she go to the police simple. and say that she was being abused? She asked for and, and help. Why didn't the school. Uh, once the no, abuse was reported, she went to the teacher. Asked for help. Were not run by the United well, States. They you know, if that would have happened, old, so if that would have happened in a California school, that teacher would have been prosecuted. Okay, Phil, let other people talk for a second. It, it here. doesn't matter. Well, let, let other people talk. Okay, right. Brian. You do not look at this from from all of the things that you guys have set up, all of the barriers that you have set up for women. And let's talk about this. You force them if they get raped or if they have sex or and somehow in, in, encompasses into having a baby, you force them to have that child. Then you re refuse to help them because you refuse to feed them at school. But we yeah. know for yeah. a fact that the child's <laughs> fault is should the child be killed because the, the, it, she was, it was a product. No, of but the child may be get killed if you allow these programs that Trump wants to yeah. get through to happen. They're no, not going to get good. They're not going to in certain it. states. They're oh. not going to get the medical care they need. Uh, they're not going to get the housing no, they need. You're, you're, you're assuming that, Phil. That, once that's again, that's Phil. 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 As a cop out. We are uh, watching it. We, we're not assuming. We've let you guys handle this. We've let you bull, bullshit us with this trickle down to the state thing yeah. for at least fifty years now, and it fails. It I pay fails. my money to the federal government much more than I pay to the state. Right. Yeah, the money the money go into the federal government yes. is way more. You know what? Let me pay less to the federal government then. If you want the states to handle it, then I don't yes. want to pay the federal and, government. And, and we should be paying less to the federal government because if you take all of the fat out of the federal government, there'd be money left That's for the states. bullshit. It's you're all never going to as long as you have a government, you're never going to get the second continental congress a chance and I nominate Phil to be the president of that second. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to give you less. They're not going to take away money from the federal government they just want to use it for for military crap more well, bombs that we don't orders need. and these are the things and that the orders, federal government yeah. should be should be doing right. and and let's talk about what an interstate run by states would look like we wouldn't have the same size lanes we wouldn't have the same markers we i never said the, the interstates should no be because you want states. something that makes you feel comfortable and you don't want all the things that don't make you feel comfortable phil no, it's not about me. No, it's it is about, about you. It's, it's all about you. It's so it's that all, other people it, can lift it's themselves all up about and you. do what your friend Baggett did uh, by lifting himself up and, and improving it's his life. You know what happens when you lift yourself up by your... Have you ever tried to lift yourself up by your bootstraps? How is yep. a you know what happens? You that. fall flat on your fucking face. Thank well, you. You go, go and to Ohio and tell first. that little girl that she's getting everything that she deserves. And that's bullshit. That, is, that happens to be... I, I'm not familiar with the case, Renee, but I can tell you this, that you can always find an exception. There's exceptions everywhere. <laughs> the no, entire no, country is an exception. Well, Are you that, kidding you're, me? You're seeing it through my optic eyes. No. My optic? Will you get, would you get to learn the English language? 
Go to New York yeah. City in the projects. Yeah, go to nice. any go to any state where the projects are, where poor City. people live, and, and see what, what their lives are like. They're, they're, they're being cursed by the scourge of drugs, the things oh. that you guys no, no, want no, legal. No, they're, they're, they're Wait a minute. We, we, what, what, what drugs do we want legal? You were a libertarian. Pot, Bill. Want pot you said legalized? you did drugs too. I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not a libertarian when it comes to drugs. But, but you said uh, you've I, done drugs. Yes. So why the fuck do you get away with it? But everybody else. Well, I haven't done it in 35 years. Fuck but. Yeah. Uh, Wait a minute. There's, 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 oh, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, you know, wait, 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 wait. Renee wants to say something, Phil. Yeah. This is so egregious. It's disgusting. And, and I'm sure it's a black guy, but I haven't looked it up. In New Orleans, no more than 30 days ago, there's a guy that had 18 grams of pot on him. Do you want to know what he got? He got 18 years because the judge thought it was okay for 18 grams to equal 18 years. Okay. 18 years for having 18 okay. grams is ludicrous. There, there was a, uh, a woman got uh, got arrested for stealing uh, four oranges. Holding up a bag. And she went before the judge and the judge said, I'm going to give you a month in jail for each one of those oranges. And the husband raised his hand and said, she also stole a can of peas. She said that? <laughs> Is this a joke you're telling? Yes, some kind yeah, of it's a joke. Oh, oh that's very, oh, oh, that's very it's funny, Phil. for every orange, it, but it, she also stole It's very funny, peas, Phil, but, you know, <laughs> the trouble is your jokes do not have credibility. Your story did. Uh, Jeff, you know, you've been very quiet through all of this. Oh, well, you know, hold on a sec, Phil. Stifle. Jeff. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, I'm very familiar with what goes on in, in New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah. Which is a, a nice city. It's got all the things are going. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people who live there with all kinds of problems that that Phil you've never had. Uh, they they don't have the education that you ever had. They don't have maybe they don't have the the general brain capabilities that you have. They definitely don't have the articulation that you have. Alex doesn't think so. Well, <laughs> we didn't say it was correct, but it, <laughs> a lot of words come out of the mouth. They people have no idea what you're talking about. And and you know what? They're, they're struggling. And their parents are struggling. This is and, true. And, and you know what? Uh, a lot of those kids don't have breakfast unless they go to school and a federal government who's wasting your money, Phil, is giving the kid a chance to have some brunch from lunch uh, and or maybe enough uh, breakfast that they can think a little better and be a little bit clearer. And, and these are kids because, you know, we, we can't do, you don't want so, to get you abortions. Know, you march you don't want, the kids you, out. You can't take the breakfast away. From the no, hey, look, I'm not saying to take the breakfast away, but there's a lot of waste in federal government that doesn't ne necessarily need to be there. And the yeah, yeah, Wait, you want to see waste? You're gonna, you know, when you where you're gonna see waste is if he ever does get this wall started. You're gonna see people <laughs> just stealing from that and gaming the system to get every piece of money they can out of it. You want to see waste? Wait till you see that one, this Phil. Wall will never be built. And you know it, I know it. The uh, fact that he is saying that he wants more money to build that goddamn wall than he's willing to give to Medicare, education, the arts, or anything else is just disgusting. Every White House puts across a budget that, of wishes that they want, and it's not going to happen. Well, you've got... No, a, you're right. It isn't going to happen exactly in that form. But, but for a guy to propose a budget yeah. like that, it's just ludicrous. Well, he, he it's proposed. obscene, Rob. Yeah. It's it is obscene. 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 It's the right word. So to build the wall, NEA should give up money. To build the wall, the FDA should give up money. To build the wall, the EPA should give up money. And you think that those, for God's every, sake, Flint, every, Michigan is right around the corner. Every for Republican uh, uh, candidate or president has wanted to eliminate uh, the EPA, including Reagan, 
uh, including uh, who was the guy who was the Texan that uh, that, that ran, uh, who uh, couldn't remember which uh, departments he wanted to eliminate. Uh, he was Perry. the guy, Rick Perry. Perry. Uh, every single Mr. one Nigger of them. himself. Yeah, well, every single one of them wanted to eliminate yeah. those things. <laughs> by the way, by the way, Brian wasn't saying you know, that uh, horribly. There's a check and balance. Yeah, okay. Uh, Look, no, food program, We there's science behind Brian, by the way, was referring to Rick Perry's ranch and its oh. name. Yes. Yeah. There is science behind nutrition of children <laughs> growing. If we don't, and I said it's, that wrong. Kids time. need food. And, we, uh, I feed my cats better than they feed the, yeah, the kids but in the it school. Has, you know, I would rather the money I go to that it. than than to the piss Christ or uh, you know some of these. You know, why do you always bring up the piss Christ? It's one piece of fucking <laughs> art, Phil. <film. laughs> You know, uh, it's it's a uh, you know I bring up a thing, uh, an individual exception, and it's no good. Well, because it, because it, because you, and, and and you know I haven't seen the piss Christ, but it's probably a pretty good piece of art, Jeff. Yeah, so you know now that you you would rather get rid of all the the federal uh, projects uh, to help kids. Well, why don't you just show up once a week? And see if you can help some kids instead, since you want to be that kind of a guy. And uh, I, I show did, us, show us what you can do. If you can't, keep your I mouth shut. I showed up in my <laughs> for twenty years. I volunteered as a police officer. I, I wore a star. I carried a gun, and I so did it. Doofy. For, what what would you say, for, Brian? I said, so did Officer Doofy and Scary Movie. Yeah. Uh, Anybody this, ever see that? Come on. Hey, hey, Brian. This was not a movie. This was the real thing. Yeah, this well, big deal. Time. I, you know, something. You, you know, something. I, was, well, Brian, it was also my life on the line, and I, I went into. And you know why your life was on the line? Because the people you were going after considered the policemen not to be protectors, but guards. Not necessarily in a prison, but only because there were oh. people that were affected by them in, in a negative way. You know, they were either burglarized, robbed, raped. How many cops? Uh, then how, where did this horrible, this it, just weird concept that blacks in black communities got about cops kill black people? Where did that it's come from? Where did it's that come from? No, wait a minute. It wasn't the media 20, 25 years ago. It wasn't 30 years ago when it was happening regularly but was never reported. You, you know, know where where uh, did this where did this where did this attitude the on the produce. part of blacks in the black community the cops were out to get them? I have nothing to do with where, that. Where, where did and that where when uh, uh, you had it. everything to do with it by being part of it, Phil? Uh, you, you, hey, next time you get uh, hit over the head and you call a cop, just say, "Hey, look, uh, you know, I, I don't like cops, so I'm not going to call one." So, I I have had those situations and I haven't called a cop, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine who I do some work with, uh, he's a, a youngster. Uh, he's probably 30 years old now. But I remember when he was in 20s, and uh, he used to teach a karate class. Black guy. Orange, Connecticut would stop any black guy driving on the street. Okay. And they would. he got stopped like five times out of nothing. Do you know how I pissed off I would be when a cop stops me? It's like, why? Well, why is it? Why is Moore, it? California, yeah. in uh, uh, Southern California, and in her neighborhood, if you drive, it's a white neighborhood. Oh, if yeah. you're of color and you drive through there, you're not making it through well, without uh, getting pulled over by the local I, police. I, and we I, all know, and we all know, I, Phil, I, I, let I, me I, say I, something, I, Phil, I, Phil, I, Phil, you don't have to answer every statement that somebody else makes. No, absolutely. You know? Uh, I've lived in those hoods, uh, You Rob. know, what I'm, what I'm saying, Rob, is that how many parents, black parents, had to give their kids what they called the talk? The talk, uh, yeah. You yes. know, so, about, about if you're stopped yeah. by police, here's how you handle yourself, because we Absolutely. don't want you That's dead. So Wait, we, Phil, you don't have to answer everything we say. You well, can listen. Honestly, you can listen rather than form your answer. I, I was listening, and as far as no, I was what did I just it's so say? One sided. What, so what did I just say? What did I just say? You said that uh, the uh, parents give the black kid the talk. Yeah. Uh, you said that, uh, uh, and, and then you started yelling at me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just uh, saying, but, Phil, that you know, and, and you don't yeah. have to answer everything we say. 
you know, and, and the fact is that we're saying some things here that are absolute truths, and that is that in the black community, there was a perception of the police as being uh, something that was offensive, that was out to get them, even if they didn't do anything. Renee? You yourself said, when, when we were discussing Trayvon Martin and all the rest of the horrific killings that have happened, mm -hmm. you yourself said that it is a war out there. It is. When it's, see, it is. It's not. When you're going into that situation. Or it's being funded by drugs. And, and who dumped the drugs in the Reagan era in their, right? Look, in, during the eight, in the 70s and 80s, I could go, I white person goes out and gets my get my mail out of my mail or get my newspaper every morning out of my newspaper box. Do you know what what Reagan was doing? They were delivering to black families coke and crank in their mailboxes. And it's we've seen it, we've read it, it's in print. We can prove it. So when you say that their communities are all about drugs, the Republicans have to stand up and I really wish a some entity. Renee, do you remember Just Say No? That was a Reagan era. That was one of the most simplistic pieces of shit I ever heard in my life. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a very funny story. Uh, when I was in San Francisco, they brought Nancy Reagan to San Francisco, and I got an invitation, and it said, you're invited to join Pros for Kids, which was an anti-drug organization. Pros for Kids, as we welcome the Honorable Nancy Reagan. Then at the bottom, it said, just say no to drugs. And then it said, cocktail seven o'clock. <laughs> That's what Nancy Reagan and her simplified answer to everything, just say no to drugs. When drugs sometimes are the only relief you get from this horrible life you've been, you've been Renee handed. Renee saying that uh, you know, the Reagans were, were dumping drugs on kids and, and uh, people in poor communities. You know, I understand that, you know, there was some trading for Contras and drugs and getting money and giving it to Iran, but that wasn't the majority of drugs that entered this country. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Phil, we, both you and me and anybody else here who's overweight, now know that sugar that the chem that sugar comes into your brain the same way cocaine does it gives you the same euphoric whatever now we've been lied to for the past 50 or 60 or 70 years saying sugar isn't a drug but you yourself if i told you to completely quit sugar for the next 30 days you're going to probably go out there and hurt somebody but yeah. see, it's not that easy to quit a drug, is it, Phil? Whether it's heroin or cocaine or sugar or no, any, but it can be rest, done. It's difficult. No, it can, it be, can done. be done. You might I, kill a few people, but it can be done. Yeah. When 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 people are using Phil, when people are using drugs to anesthetize anesthetize themselves against the society which is oppressing them. Uh, uh, actually, drugs were induced into places like Harlem, where I live, in the in the 20s and 30s, as a method of literally sedating the black populace. Uh, and you believe that bullshit? I be, I be, it isn't bullshit, Phil. It's documented. It, you know, it, it was the jazz musicians that oh. were, were smoking pot. And then it yeah, caught yeah, on yeah, uh, yeah, to the yeah, masses. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, they, they addicted. Uh, they did it to themselves. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. So, I'm sorry, Alex, is, is, did we do this? Oh, oh now we can see Jeff. He turned on a light and now we can see him. There he yes. is. Did we do this before? Did we go into a black community and dump a whole bunch of drugs and then blame them for being stupid and dumb? Basically, the infusion of drugs uh, in the 20s and 30s was as a method of sedating those communities. And so the Reagans came, Reagan came in and said, hey, that worked really well. Let's try it again. That's bullshit. I was going to say, Renee, you're speaking of that in the past tense, like we're not doing it now as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Trump. Jeff, we can see you now. The lights are on. I was going to say, I've, I decided uh, while uh, Phil was uh, 
get, getting me a little pissed off. I'd say, I'm going to work on the lights. <laughs> Please, Good I could do something. Good job. By the way, I have a couple of items here I'd like to mention before we go off. Uh, number one, uh, Monica Lewinsky. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, says Roger A. Well, said uh, offered her own take on longtime Fox News boss Roger Ailes, who died May 18th at 77. Mm-hmm. Lewinsky okay. wrote in an op-ed in the New York Times that Ailes was a key player when her relationship with President Bill Clinton came to light in the 1990s. Mr. <laughs> Ailes, a former Republican political operative, took the story of the affair and the trial that followed and made. Certain his anchors hammered at it ceaselessly um, 24 hours a day, Lewinsky wrote. It worked like magic. The story hooked viewers and made them Fox loyalists. For the past 15 years, Fox has been the number one news station. Last year, the network made about $2.3 billion. Okay? Lewinsky adds, Some experts have noted that viewers found Fox for the first time because of the crisis. John Moody, a Fox executive editor, reflected on that period. The Lewinsky saga put us on the news map. As he put it in another interview, Monica was a news channel's dream come true. Hey, uh, Alex. Yes. You know what Roger Ailes did well? Yeah. 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 Yes. There's nothing more than uh, aiding an adulterer. Anyway, anyway, uh, Alex and everyone else, aside from Kevin, have you checked the IM? Uh, section of the uh, Skype. No. You. I don't look. Presence there. How do you do that? Uh, you go up top right hand corner. It has a little bubble, a chat bubble. Yeah, oh, I see it. Oh, a chat bubble. I see. I'm, I'm never. Yeah, up there on the right hand corner, there's a little yeah. expression cartoon bubble. Yeah. And, yeah. and then it, if you click on it again, it goes away. But that was cute, Brian. Was, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Lines, I'm surprised yeah. a lot of most of you, if not all of you, haven't seen the scary movie movies. No, I've seen a scary movie. I just didn't remember. So, what was your reference again? The doofy, uh, the doofy character. Special officer doofy reporting for duty. Okay. <laughs> he so sticks his you're... dick in the vacuum cleaner, and he like, you know, he thinks he's uh, more important than he actually is. Much like high school gym teachers do as well. You know, these yeah. cocksuckers are, as I call them, junior detectives. I, I have yeah. my own turn of phrase: junior detectives, people who think that they're, uh, you know. God's gift to whatever profession that they uh, and, and, and this do. quick and this quick this quick thing. item is the treatment of reporters under the Trump administration continues to gain attention in Washington. Two members of the Senate Commerce Committee have asked a panel to hold a hearing on the state of the media. Multi-channel news reports that the effort by Senators Maggie Has, uh, Hassan, Democrat of New Hampshire, and Tom Udall, Democrat of New Mexico, comes partly in response to an incident last week in which a reporter had a run-in with FCC security. Both are members of the committee and sent a letter to the FCC seeking info on what happened May 18th when the reporter said he was pinned against a wall by security guards for trying to ask a question of a commissioner after a meeting. Really? Yeah. They want it looked that's, into. That's Sounds like what uh, the president of Turkey security guards uh, did to uh, a couple of protesters out in front of the. Uh, well, what does that have to do with this story? Well, it, it's, no, no, uh, no, no, security no, no. guards were overreacting. Because <laughs> oh, they're allowed to. Uh, it's also part of that sense of permission that I mentioned a while ago. Well, these, you know? these were Turkish. Uh, Security well, we don't care about the Turkish security. Emboldened ball sack brawlers they are, as Yoda would say. Man, this, this is all exhausting. This is, this is all exhausting. Colbert is right, you know. It, it, it's just, it, last week was in the history of the Trump story. Had the most gaffes happen. I mean, we had everything going for it. We, we had, uh, and if you want to see a whole recitation of all of them, Colbert, uh, not Colbert, but uh, John Oliver did an amazing summary of the no, week that week. just kept giving and kept giving, and you know the Russians and the Russians being told that uh, that uh, you know he knew something about this and that, and uh, then uh, the the fact that he then called uh, Comey to the Russians, uh, what do you call him, a nutcase? You know? Yeah. Oh, that's very that, very that pres- a... very presidential. Very presidential. Sweet move by Comey, though. Sweet move. Sure, I'll testify, but I'm going to testify only in public. Only in public. I'm going to let the hope, and we're and we're all waiting for that. We're all waiting for that. Hey, well, he says it will probably be nothing. 
uh, well, well, we'll wait and see, Phil. Whether it like comes Polaroid, to, right? I'm not saying I'm not saying that there's going to be an impeachment here because it, that's a long way off and a lot of things, T's to cross and I's to dot and so on. Anyway, uh, we got we got to close this whole thing off. Uh, Phil, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Same thank to you, you, Rob Alfano, Jeff Stein. Glad you got the lights on. I, know, I told you, I if you pay the bill, it's going to look much better. Uh, <laughs> Renee, right. thank you for calling in from Hawaii. Brian Ludwig, always a pleasure. Keep delivering those hearts to people who need them. Maybe one of them should be Donald Trump. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. And Anthony Magno, Tony, uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you all again, uh, let's see, uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Thanks for calling. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. And that's it for us. Uh, let me see here. Let me just turn a few things off, as I always have to do rather clumsily and, and get rid of our, our citizen panel. Uh, let me see here. Offline. There we go. Okay. Now the next show can use the same thing. And the next show, by the way, is if you're if you're interested, uh, the uh, uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy, and they are followed at one o'clock in the morning by Connections. Meanwhile, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Bye.